Noa, that is a good example. We have a guitar. My uh, English name is Herb Adson. Uh, currently, the uh, cultural director here for the Pawnee Nation. Uh, we have a uh, cultural resource division, and I'm the cultural director. Uh, we started the the tribe started the cultural department in uh, 2016, and I was hired as the uh, uh, director and still here. <laughs> so I'm a retired uh, uh, law enforcement officer, uh, approximately 30 years, 29 and some change, and uh, started the first two years and started in 1986 at the Pawnee Nation. And then two years later, come up here to work for the city of Pawnee and uh, retired in 2015 with the last 12 years as the chief of police here for mm -hmm. our town. All right, so everybody knows who you are around here. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I want to ask you to talk about your background as a singer, how you came to it, uh, how you got started, when it started. That's, a, uh, that's an interesting question, because maybe I, I might not even know the answer to that, mm -hmm. Hugh, because some of our culture, it's kind of like it's already ingrained, you know? Mm -hmm. Like when, when my daughters were going to have children, uh, I... Uh, I wanted them to, when they were carrying a child, I wanted them to be around our, our Indian ways. I, I wanted them, my, ch my future grandkids, to be, to be familiar with, with uh, singing, with the hearing of the drum and, and bells and gourds and things like that. So, so when, they, when they were born, they wouldn't be scared, they wouldn't be nervous or anything like that. And I wanted them to hear our language because so, because nowadays our English is our language we use. So I didn't want them to be afraid or anything like that. So. So uh, maybe it was that way for me, because as far as I, as far as I could go back to, like maybe even my uh, elementary school age, I've, I've always wanted to sing, and I was singing and humming when mm -hmm. I was just a, a, a young kid in, in grade school. Mm -hmm. So uh, back then, I, I wanted to I wanted to be a singer, and I kind of knew I was going to be a singer one day, you know, mm -hmm. and so uh, I'd always. Uh, listen to recordings that my folks had. They'd have a reel-to-reel uh, -reel recorder and they'd play old tapes, maybe from uh, the old radio station out here, uh, WNAD, mm -hmm. they'd have recordings of that, or some of our dances that were here, or whatever, but I'd, I'd always listen to them. Then pretty soon we started buying uh, albums. My mm -hmm. folks had a few albums and listened to them, you know. So all through that, I, I started uh, gaining more and more interest in, in singing. Mm -hmm. All right. Was there a, a moment where a mentor came into play and said, hey, you've got what it takes. Sit over here and pick it up. Well, I'm kind of still waiting for someone to say, you got what it takes. You know, I'm still kind of waiting for that part. So uh, maybe, maybe you could fit that role here. But, uh, we'll but uh, uh, maybe when I was starting to be a teenager, because I used to dance uh, uh, when I was maybe before I was even in school age, I started out as a, a straight dancer. Mm -hmm. My folks had pictures of me on my straight dance clothes. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to school age, I started being a fancy dancer. And then when I got about a teenager, I, I kind of put that away. I, I didn't mm -hmm. want to do it anymore. And so uh, there was a couple of years I didn't, I didn't really take, take part in anything. But I always had that singing in my, in my, inside me that wanted to do. And so... Uh, like a lot of Indians, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of shy, mm -hmm. and that's where I was, kind of, kind of shy. Mm -hmm. But my, uh, we lived in California back then. Mm. My folks were part of that re a relocation program. Mm -hmm. And so we lived out in California during, during those times. And so uh, my, uh, I had an uncle, Uncle John Knife Chief, and then my, my dad, and, and other, other relatives that, that sang at the drum. And they, they kind of seen that, that that's what I wanted to do. They could, they could sense that, I guess. And so every now and then they'd have maybe a little, like we'd call like a show, maybe at mm -hmm. a school or boys, boys scouts or whatever. They'd have some kind of a show. And so that's kind of where I got started there, mm -hmm. helping them out, singing. But uh, the first time I actually went up to the big drum, I, I believe I was 16 years old, mm -hmm. and, so, and uh, I just kind of went on my own, mm -hmm. went out there and uh, started singing, and just kind of, kind of kept going after that. And then when I when I moved back here, 
1978. I was fortunate to still have a lot of the, uh, the older men here, mm -hmm. my, my older relatives, and uh, I would try to, I just like to sing, so I was singing all the time, and they must have seen, seen an interest in there, mm -hmm. seen an interest in me, and so they kind of had patience with me, one that couldn't speak our language, but I'd always ask them about our songs and, and the meaning. And then when, when that come about, they, they told me, they, 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 they explained the songs to me. And then they, they brought it out to or even our culture, not just the songs, but our, our culture in general. Mm -hmm. So sometime in there is when, when I really, really kind of took off, I guess, probably in the late 70s, probably hmm. 78, somewhere in there, where I really, really got to be in the, involved in that. Even though I was singing, like I said, five or six years before that. Mm -hmm. Is there a, a Herb Adson style of singing? I, I think, I, I think our, our Pawnee men have a style of singing, mm -hmm. or they did. And uh, I don't have that, that strong of a voice that some of our older men had. Mm -hmm. So the voice I project is, is my own. I don't, try to, I don't try to sing like somebody or don't try to make it sound like something else, it's just, it's just my own voice. Our language, uh, I guess, I guess we, we, for me anyway, in the 80s and 90s, maybe we thought those older folks that, that talked Pawnee all the time, that they were gonna, that they'd already taught their, their relatives, or that they were gonna continue to live, or we're gonna, when they sit out, sit down like this and, and recorded it, you know. And uh, most of the time that, that didn't happen for the most part. And so when they started passing away there about 25, 30 years ago, we found ourselves with, with very few speakers. And so uh, as it is right now, we don't have what, uh, what our language folks call a, a first language speakers. We don't, we don't have any more of those. And so, uh, but we, our language is still alive and we have a, uh, a language program that just that just starting uh, our full-time language program here at the Pawnee Nation, and so uh, <clears throat> that's about ready to take off. So that's really going to add to what it already is, which is, I think there's a much, there's enough interest that our language is going to continue to grow, mm -hmm. and uh, I see other tribes around this area that that they're they got real strong language programs, and, and uh, so I hope that we can we can do the same. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my goal was when we had that language program started again was, uh, and it started about when we started here at the Culture Resource Division, CRD uh, in 2016, we got a grant to get it started. And it was just through uh, uh, contract workers, but my goal was uh, to be able to pray in our language. Mm -hmm. And so uh, through, those, through those young men's help, I'm able to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so I think our, our language is in good shape. Mm -hmm. Not the best shape, but uh, I, think, I think it's going to be able to continue. Mm -hmm. And then with our songs, uh, that, that's kind of how we kept our language going. I, I tell them, the young instructors, that's kind of how we kept our language going. In the 90s and the, maybe 20 years ago or so, after the older folks, most of our older folks died, we were able to still hear our language through these songs. Mm -hmm. And then when I learned some new words, I said, well, that, that, this, is, this is a phrase in one of those old songs we have. Mm. It's, here, here's, 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 what, here's what that is, you know. Mm. And so I was able to, to find a little common thread there with our, with our songs and our language to, to, to kind of keep it, keep it alive. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is the way that, 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 that those old guys would say it or they would sing it, you know. Because, uh, like I said, we didn't have any more first language speakers, and they'd say, well, here's, here it is, but how, do, how would we say that, you know? Mm -hmm. So I said, well, in the song, this is the way it is, or this is the way his, his name is pronounced in that song, you know? Oh, okay. So, mm. so that was the connection we had. Now, you told me that you went up to, I think, Indiana University, where they have the folk music archives. Yes. And you got to listen to some older recordings yes. and work yes. on potentially getting those back here yes. so you can hear them some more. Did you find anything surprising there that you instantly recognized that surprised you? Both, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I was surprised by, by some of that that, that I did know. Uh, most of it I, uh, I didn't know. They were old, old uh, society songs that we, we don't have anymore, different ceremonies that we don't have anymore. And some of them I heard about them. I always heard, oh, these are real pretty songs or whatever, but I never got to hear them. And so uh, 
I, I did, but uh, they're good to have, but we can't perform that ceremony anymore, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But but there were still some songs that that they had sang that that I uh, that I knew I could sing along with some of our war dance songs or, or ghost dance songs and maybe a, even a hand game song in there or something that, that mm -hmm. I recognized. So mm -hmm. it, it was good. It mm -hmm. was good. All right. The next thing we'd like to get you to address is some of the values or responsibilities that you want to pass on to younger singers. There's kind of a, a, a chore and even a sacrifice to, to being a singer to being a singer for our for our people, it's uh, it, it's it's a, it's something that uh, that our, our folks uh, look look forward to uh, our songs, hearing our songs, uh, wherever whatever occasion it is, and so there's there's a lot that uh, uh, we have to learn that that uh, about going about to be a singer. Uh, some people think they could just come out there and bring their chair out there and sing and, and in a way that that's that's good you want to learn but uh, the old fellows would say like you better have some songs ready you know you, you may be asked to lead a song you you, you, you ought to be ready mm -hmm. so it's kind of hard to tell our younger people that our young men that to come out here you want to learn that that that's good but yet you, you better learn something first you know because mm -hmm. you don't want to be a hindrance you don't want to drum at a different beat than the other singers are like that, you know. Mm -hmm. But I would say the the main thing is to come out there with that with that humbleness. That's what those that's what those old men told me. Where we sit, these positions we have, whether it's a head singer or just a singer for our people, those are humble seats we have. Mm -hmm. Humble positions we have. Not to want to act 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 any kind of way or proud or or bragging or boastful or anything like that. It, these are these are humble humble positions that we have. There's going to be a time when our folks are going to ask you to sing, and it may be a hard, hard time. They may be having a hard time in their life, or they may be ill or sick or in mourning or trying to come out of mourning, and, uh, or they've just been away from home for a long time. And so they're, 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 they're looking for something, and it's up to us to bring that good spirit out of the drum and the, for the crowd, everybody, to, to feel good. So. Mm -hmm. It's hard to relate that to, to a lot of singers, but, but that, that's, our, that's our duties and our responsibilities and that, that we try to, that I try to pass on anyway. The project that we want to do is to teach some young people uh, four songs. Do you have a, a thought yet on the four songs that you want to teach these young people and get them to sing and be confident enough to do it in front of other people? Yes, I, I actually want, hopefully it'll, it'll grow to, to the, with the, these singers, these young men will, will want to sing, will want to continue on. But when you said four songs, I said, like, well, what, what would they, what would be good? So probably uh, one song they probably need to know is, is our flag song. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes their folks are asked to sing our flag song and they might not even be a singer, you know, but, but they say, well, we want somebody to sing a flag song, you know. Mm -hmm. So it might, that might be a good a good song to to learn, you know, mm -hmm. for our, uh, our 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 young men. So that's kind of one of the songs I wanted them to learn. Hey, hey, hey.
you're sitting with a drum behind you there, and I know this will be an elementary question for you, but the response and answer is not elementary for people who don't know anything about it. So would you take a couple minutes and discuss the significance of the drum? For me, it's a, it's almost like a big, it's a big part of me, and, it, and it's almost like a, like a, it's just so much of my, it, it, it's a big for our culture, for our people, but, but for me, the, uh, the undertaking that I took is, uh, if, 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 I had a, if I had a hobby, this, 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 this would be it, singing at the big drum. This is what I, this is what I, what I, what those old men seen in me, mm -hmm. and they must have seen something good about me that interested them, that, that they, they went ahead and, and started teaching me the songs, mm -hmm. of the drum, and the, the, the ways and the etiquette about the drum. They told me the, the name for it, they, they told me how to conduct myself around it, how to take care of it when I have it, how to, how to sit it down, and, and how, it, how it, it sits in here. And then we sit around it. We're we're just like uh, we're like an extension of the drum. We're we're not we're not. When uh, I always tell my my boys when when they put money or tobacco or something on a drum, it, it's for them. People say, "Oh, shake their hand, give one, shake their hand, shake their hand." Well, they're not giving it to me. Mm -hmm. They're giving it to the drum. Mm -hmm. We're just an extension. Mm -hmm. So if they want to shake my hand, that's all right too, you know. Mm -hmm. So and then when we're done singing. My, my older mentor say, this one, he gets up first. Hmm. So we, we set him up, and then, then we get up. Uh -huh. that, that's the way our Pawnees do. Other tribes, I don't, I don't want to comment on how they do. Mm -hmm. That's the way we do. Mm -hmm. So I try to tell our singers around here, you just sit still until we put that drum up. And when mm -hmm. we put that drum up, then you guys go ahead and get up mm -hmm. and leave. And so it's, it's all about uh, respect. Mm -hmm. I know uh, uh, sometimes, some tribes, rather, they, they refer to the drum as, as grandpa. Mm -hmm. And that's a real good way to look at it. Mm -hmm. That's a real good way to look at it. For, for our people, we don't say that, but we say that was a, a, a living being at one time, mm -hmm. has a spirit about it. Mm -hmm. You know, through the hide, through the, through the, through the, uh, the drum itself, mm -hmm. it, it, it's all, it, was all, it was all alive at one time. Mm -hmm. So with that, there's a spirit in there. And as Pawnees, we're able to bring that spirit out. There's a, there's a time in the dance where we're all together, we're all drumming together, the spirit's right, the dancer's gonna feel it, the crowd, and that, that, drum's, gonna, that drum's gonna sing along with us. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's that spiritual part about it. That's that spiritual part about that I can't, I can't describe in words how, how it feels, mm -hmm. and, but it, it's like that. It is, it's going to come about, and so that's why it's a big part of my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm very thankful to the older men that, that mentors that I had uh, back in the '70s and '80s that, that, that took time and, and, to, and to, to tell me about that. So I, I put it in my life, mm -hmm. and, and that, that's the way that's the way I try to keep it within me. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they say uh, for our folks to say. Our word for the, the dance and everything is uh, idushka, and they mm -hmm. say uh, that's that's a hard road. Mm -hmm. Don't don't go around and say I'm a idushka man. Mm -hmm. If you say that, you you, be, you better be you better be you better be sure when you say those words. Cause there's a lot of sacrifice mm -hmm. that goes into that. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, I've seen that. I've seen that. You know. Mm -hmm. and so that's what I try to be. But I don't know if I ever reached that that that, mm -hmm. that part. Mm -hmm. Kind of just like a a Christian, mm -hmm. you probably never reach that, but you're always trying to live that that real good life, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I try to do with this this drum. I try to live that that real good life, because they say that that road there, that that seat of that the person that's in charge or the head singer, that's a that's a humble position, mm -hmm. but uh, that that's one of uh, a sacrifice, and so. Uh, Maybe you don't have to be a real strong singer or a good singer, but you got to be a good man. You got to be a good man to, to sit in that in that seat there. So, mm -hmm. with that, I try to live my life best I can as well.
was some of the differences between being a singer at a powwow and a, a singer who sings specific tribal or ceremonial songs. There are two different roles there. We'll have people watching this, students specifically, they don't understand the difference between someone who sings at an intertribal powwow as opposed to a specific activity where it is tribally specific. What are some of the differences between these yes. two? Yes, I'm, I'm going to try to find the, the, the right words to this, uh, uh, Hugh, because I have some strong feelings about this, you know, about, about the uh, modern day powwow. The modern day powwow, even, even uh, as a child, uh, the powwow that, that I knew is different from the powwow of today. Uh, and so uh, most of the men that I grew up singing with uh, not not my mentors, but but in my in my peers, we kind of like started the same, kind of like for our own communities and kind of like uh, uh, ceremonial singers, I would say, because we didn't just start at the powwows. We started singing for our own folks, and and then we had those that have us that had uh, ceremonial dances. Uh, then that that that's where we got our start, and then then after we got our our. Uh, community and our, our songs and our, for our folks, when we got those all learned and in place, then we kind of we kind of reached out and went to the to the modern day powwow. And we learned other tribe songs, you know, and then then we learned uh, even northern tribe songs, things like that, you know. But uh, so those that start out with your with your own community or your reservation or whatever. Those, those are like ceremonial singers. Though. Those are the ones that are really, you want to hang on to. You, you, they're, they're special, and our folks know that, and they're going to go see them when they want something. They're going to ask them to help them. They're not going to ask a guy that maybe be on the powwow trail and see if he could come back and sing for this, or this or that, you know. But you want someone there that, that you could depend on. The, uh, the uh, powwow singers now, they... Uh, I guess because of, of money and big powwows and uh, casino powwows and, and that, uh, it kind of it kind of changed. It kind of changed people, and kind of almost like a. Uh, I heard in the older days they'd say like a like powwows turn in like a carnival atmosphere, mm -hmm. and so I, I seen I seen it that way, and then I seen it almost like a, almost like rock stars or something. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these big northern groups. You know. They're, they're, that's the way they're treated. They, they, they treat some of these, these powwows, these big powwows, they, 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 they treat them folks like, like they're rock stars. Mm -hmm. Good or bad, I don't know, mm -hmm. but they treat them like that. And I don't know if, if that's the way that, that they should be treated, you know. I don't think they should be uh, demanding a set price to come sing. Mm -hmm. I don't think they should demand uh, we, we have uh, uh, airfare and, and uh, hotels and, and all these meals and I don't think they they, they it was meant to to uh, uh, make a living off of these powwows our songs things like that 
Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. I didn't think it was meant to be to be that way. Mm -hmm. But our our older men, anyway, they, they didn't think that way. Even though when they were asked to do something to go sing somewhere, they they would try to uh, do that for folks who invited them. But yet, it's kind of got it's kind of turned around to make it kind of kind of worse. Mm -hmm. so we've seen the kind of the the worst of it in the last I don't know since the big powwow has come about mm -hmm. the last twenty years or so. Mm -hmm. And so our, our our young younger men kind of seen that, and uh, and so they uh, they seen how it is, and then so they they kind of got they kind of got proud. They kind of got proud and boastful, mm -hmm. and they got lazy about things how they how they treat the drum, mm -hmm. how they show up to the drum, mm -hmm. how they how they dress at the drum, mm -hmm. and. Uh, just things like that. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll, I'll stop right there. Right. Yeah. Again, I can only talk for our Pawnees. I don't want mm to. -hmm. I don't want to try to mention other tribes, you know. Mm -hmm. But but for for our Pawnees, we're I think we're blessed as a small tribe to have uh, several younger singers. Uh, I'd say like forty years on down. And, and still seems like there's more interest in, in learning our learning our songs, and so <clears throat> I think our future is really in, in real good hands, in, in real good hands, to to continue with our with our songs, whether it's a, at a small little community dance or a hen game, or if it's on a larger scale or, or homecoming powwow or Oklahoma powwow or powwows the big powwows out of state, I think our our young men. Uh, have heard it over and over the years how how we, how to conduct themselves. What 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 a blessing it is to have have this drum, and have this drum in our culture. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of tribes that that have these big powwows now, but they don't have that connection with this big drum. That it, it, it was never part of their culture, mm -hmm. and so they 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 kind of struggle with it. Mm -hmm. So they don't know what to do. So they they get outsiders to help them with their powwows. And then, then they're kind of like taking advantage of to me what 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 they're what they're shelling out. Mm -hmm. They're not getting back what they're what they're what they're taking what they're what they're expending to the different different folks. And so uh, our our local singers here they they kind of know that. And so uh, we have a a language program that's getting stronger and stronger, and we've got interest in our in our young people to learn our language. And then uh, we have a we're working on a grant here to uh, to digitize our, our our Indian music, our Pawnee mm -hmm. music, and so we we have like I think there's 11 categories of our of our songs that mm -hmm. we have, and so uh, we've been singing those for the last since about November, uh, twice a week, and uh, I know our war dance songs we, we start singing, just our straight war dance songs that didn't mm -hmm. belong to anybody or anything like that, and mm -hmm. we're there's no songbook or anything, but mm -hmm. we were like 150 songs we wow. we, we had sang, and so uh, I think I think it's in good hands if we could keep that pass that down and our young young men going. <laughs>
Now we'd like to do take a group picture of y'all. And I've seen that in other tribes as well. Some some tribes are more blessed than we are to, mm -hmm. to still have their, their older singers. And uh, though a lot of them was uh, recorded, you know, a uh, lot of our lot of our songs they they weren't recorded. Uh, so, uh, or if they were, they were recorded, but there was no no uh, translation or anything like that mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, if you wanted to do that, you, you had to you had to go see those folks. Mm -hmm. And that that's what that and that that's what I did. That's what I was I was I was able to do. Because we had those old men that were still around here in the 70s and 80s, and so mm -hmm. I was able, able to go see them. And then you don't just go see them. Mm -hmm. You know, you 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 might be expected to be there all day. Right. And then then you're kind of in my heart and what I heard. You, you go take them a gift, mm -hmm. and then maybe later on you might give them some more even more gifts. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge that relationship. Mm -hmm. You know. And that, then that, that's where it's going to grow. That's where everything's going to, going to take place, you know. Then they're going to teach you the songs. Then when they teach you the songs, they're going to, they're going to teach you the words, how to say them. How to say them. And if you're talking, then how, do you say, how you say them to fit the song. Hmm. They're going to tell you the story behind the song. Because there's a lot of stories in our old songs, mm -hmm. even straight songs. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 there's, a, there's a story behind them. Mm -hmm. So when you learn that, the story behind it, the wording, the meaning, all that. Learn how to sing it. Learn how to drum the right beat with it. Then that's when you're going to get all those blessings that the, what we heard about. It's all going to come about. You're going to you're going to you're going to be able to to have it, to feel it. Then you're able to share it with your family and the other singers and the crowd and the dancers and all that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I answered your question or not. Well, you know, get, do people come to you and, and ask you to make songs for them, their children, families, events, that kind of thing? Does that happen to you these days? Yes. Uh, uh, I'm one of the original members of the Southern Thunder Singers. And so we started singing. We, we really didn't have many songs. And so I said, well, we have this song here. Well, I made this song here and there and maybe a couple other fellas. We, had, we didn't have enough to even make a whole recording, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, we started making a few songs. So uh, I did too. And... Uh, I was just telling my boys the other day when we were up here recording that uh, I said, this song here I sang, I, I was even trying to sing. I said, I was just driving a police car. I worked the night shift. I was just driving around. I was circling the Pawnee Lake. And this little tune just, just come about. And that, that just come to me, you know. So uh, sometimes songs come like that, mm -hmm. you know. The old folks say sometimes a little sound is going to remind you something. Maybe, maybe in the wind or maybe... Uh, a bird singing or whatever, something's, mm -hmm. come, something's just gonna just gonna come about you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're not even gonna try. It's just, it's just, it's just, you're just singing songs, humming along, and then a tune comes, gonna come to you, you know. But uh, uh, some of our folks, I don't know how many, four or five or six have come to me and, and asked mm -hmm. me to make a song for their, for their relative, for their mm -hmm. loved one. So I have done that, yes, I, I have, I have been able to. To do that, you know, and, and I'm, uh, I don't know how I was going to do that when they first told me. I said, I, I, you know, I've never been asked that. I'm, right. I'm going to try, you know. Mm -hmm. So I thought I better go to prayer about it, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. I started with prayer, and, and just after a while, it, the tune came to me, you know. And then sometimes they they would they would they would they would tell me what they want. Maybe they maybe that fella or that person has an Indian name, mm -hmm. or maybe he was in a service or whatever he was about, you know. So I try to get those thoughts and try to put those those good thoughts that they had into that song, which which they want for their their loved one. Mm -hmm. So I always ask people, what who's Pawnee, or what does it mean to be Pawnee, or what is a Pawnee? <laughs> right. You know, and they'll all get different answers. I said the government they say we have to have a card. Mm -hmm. They have to have a card that says you're whatever degree of Pawnee. Is that is that what, is that what you all agree with? It makes them think, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, because uh, I'll give you an example. I said, my, my own children, they don't have one of them. They're enrolled with their mother's tribe. I said, but there's nobody here that can convince me that my children are not Pawnee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I started thinking, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> or one day I'm going to have, because uh, uh, unless a Pawnee marries another Pawnee, pretty soon you're, you're, that bloodline's going to lose, you know. 
So like even now, my, my grandchildren, if they don't marry a Pawnee, then they're, they're, there's no way that, that they could even try to be a, have an opportunity to be a Pawnee mm -hmm. unless we drop that blood quorum to, what do you call it? Uh, mm, well, there's no blood quorum. Uh, well, descendancy. Descendancy, yes, mm -hmm. the word, yeah, unless we drop it to that. So, so does that mean they're not Pawnees anymore? You know, I, I don't, I don't know what that, what that, what that means. So, so with that, I think there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, for our tribe, I think it's, I've seen it as a, our younger people want to want to tell folks that they're that they're Pawnee. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of our folks don't seem to want to. They want to say that, but they don't want to take part in our culture. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, mm -hmm. but. Uh, for the most part, especially our younger people, I think I think there's there's something that that's come about a movement uh, through however it means media or whatever or their own family that 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 they're, they're they they want to stand up for themselves that they're Pawnee mm -hmm. because we, we 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 have to remind our folks that any day the government can can shut us down if they want to mm -hmm. they can say you're not a federally recognized tribe anymore mm -hmm. or you you only have four or five speakers or more. Once mm -hmm. they're gone, you don't have a language, so mm -hmm. you're done, you know. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take your land away from you. You don't have any land base, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't have your no, no more ceremonies. Here's all your ceremonies that you had. You don't have them anymore, mm -hmm. you know. You have a handful, you know. So with that, our folks try to, try to some of our younger folks, they wanna get interested. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm surprised that some of the folks that I would think had no interest in our people and our culture and our ways, well, they, they, they kind of show up just like yesterday we had a chief day here. Mm -hmm. I said, well, you would never know how this is going to go, you know, but we, we, it was packed in here. Mm -hmm. It was really packed. I was really, really glad to see that our folks come over here, you mm -hmm. know. And so uh, I, think, I think it's something positive for our folks to want to be more aware that they're Indian in general and then, then uh, for us, for, for being a Pawnee. Well, that leads to this final encouragement question then, what encouragement do you have for young people who may not be completely aware of their individual tribal background, but they're interested? I've asked this question of other people, and sometimes it's a difficult answer because you want the young person to be involved, but they've got to take that first step, and sometimes they're too nervous to take that first step. So what encouragement do you have for young people? Yes, from, from a... From a from a person that was real shy as a, as a young person, and still am, but I was, I was real shy as a young person, and uh, grew up the only the only Indian in my in my school when I was in uh, middle school and uh, high school. Uh, I, I I know the difficulties of of of, uh, of being an Indian. And then knowing that uh, our young people here are, are faced with a lot of lot of difficulties, a uh, lot of a lot of hardships that they go through. I was fortunate and I was blessed to have uh, one mom and one dad all the way through my uh, my uh, childhood, and I was fortunate that that my that my I didn't I didn't see uh, domestic violence or or drugs or alcohol by my folks or anybody like that. I, I was very blessed to not, to not to have to, to deal with that. Or uh, the difficulties that all the, through the modern age, through the internet and bullying and peer pressure, all that was there, but it seemed like there's even more as what, the, what our young people go through now, the missing People, the, the the young women, things like that, all that, all that, all that is is something that we we uh, more aware of. And I I, uh, I have a I have a teenage granddaughter, and uh, check on her all the time. Check with her her mom every day, and uh, pray for her. I tell her that every day, grandpa, to pray for you every morning and every every night before I go to bed. Because I want everything to be good for you. Don't 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 want anything to to happen to you. Don't want anything like that to to go wrong. I want you to be enjoy this life because mm -hmm. one day you're going to get like grandpa's age and I don't know what this world's going to be as far as endedness. I don't know what you're going to have to go through. Mm -hmm. But if, we could, you could, if you could take what, what grandpa and grandma is telling you, well, then you, then you, could, you, you could say, well, I remember my grandpa did this, you know. 
My grandpa had this to, to lean on and his music, he said, oh, his music always made him feel good and made him relaxed, you know, mm -hmm. had a good, good sense of it, a calming effect, you know. My grandpa, when I went in his house, I could smell cedar or something like that. Make it make me feel good and make me sleep good, things like that, you know. My grandpa, he had a, he had a teepee ground in his backyard. My grandpa, he had, a, he had a little sweat lodge in his backyard, you know. Things like that. He had folks come over. They'd come over. we share a meal together with our folks. we have our birthdays together, things like that, our Christmases together like that. And everybody would be in a good mood. No one would be mad or intoxicated or anything like that. Everything would go good. So my grandkids, they could, they could see that. They could remember that. Even though hardship was around us, we always made the best of it through our culture, through our tribal ways, through our prayers, songs like that. Mm -hmm. And it's available to our folks. Whether they want to take part in it or not, our culture is available. We have a real strong, rich history of our Pawnee people yeah. if, if, if they will take advantage of it. If they, if, they, if they would ask their folks, their elders, and if their folks don't know, if their elders don't know, there's a lot of folks that are, are out here. We have a chief's council that's available to them. They, they, they welcome our young people or old people to come ask them questions, mm -hmm. ask them for help, ask them for advice or counseling or anything like that. We have that. We have our cultural department here. We have our ceremonial leaders here. We have, we have those kind of folks here that are willing to help them. So all of that's available to our folks if they'll take advantage of it. But if you don't, then, then you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna fall by the wayside like a lot of our folks have already done. Mm -hmm. They're going to fall into those bad habits of drug abuse, mm -hmm. of alcoholism, of domestic violence, of being arrested in that revolving door, of being incarcerated, those kinds of things, you know. Then you won't be able to find employment, you know. Then It, it just gets worse and worse after that, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, it don't have to be that way, you know. Mm -hmm. But some of our folks, they, they had to live that way, but yet we have folks that live through that and have a lot of uh, success stories of mm -hmm. what, what, they, what they live through. So in those tough times, there's always, there's always a chance to come out of it and make, make good, make good for yourself if they want to. Mm -hmm. And so I would say like, uh, never, never give up, uh, learn how to pray, so ask your folks how to pray, uh, and then use that, use that, use that prayerful that prayerful, that's the key in a lot of our, our Indian, our Pawnee ways is, is prayer. And our culture is available here. Use it, lean on it at that time like that. And then uh, also utilize the best of what the, what the modern world is. That's uh, education or a computer or the internet. All that was meant for good, but it didn't always turn out good. You know? uh -huh. find, find something you're interested in and, and, and pursue it. Mm -hmm. Whether it's in uh, academics or sports or, or a singer or a musician or whatever it is, find it, learn it, and, and uh, go forward with it best you can. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully education, that's probably, the, that's probably the best thing to do. And uh, I say that from an uneducated person, just a high school graduate. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of my folks and, uh, have... Uh, have bettered their life through education. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a hard road. It's a very difficult road. And then even when you're done, it, it's, still, it's still a lot of uh, difficulties with that, with uh, uh, student loans and then uh, trying to find a, a job to fit that, whatever your degree is. Mm -hmm. and you would think you'd, you'd be making, it'd be a, the easy road, but it takes a while before you get to that, that part where you can make real comfortable living where you can take care of yourself. How do we say thank you in Pawnee? Nawa Edi. Want to slow it down for us? Nawa Edi. Nawa Edi. Edi, yeah. Edi. Nawa Edi. That's okay. the easiest way, yeah. Nawa like Edi. That. that word Nawa, a lot of people say that's like hello. Or, yeah. But it's like, a, that's the way we acknowledge one another when we yeah. see each other. Mm -hmm. We say a Pawnee, we say Nawa. Mm -hmm. But then that's even those old men, they would, when, when someone is saying something good or they're praying, they say, no. They would acknowledge that, what they're saying. Oh, see? Uh -huh. So when you put that, that little itty part, that, that's even more. Uh -huh. You're thanking them for what, what that expression is, that there's that acknowledgement. Uh -huh. So that's kind of what that, what, that, how that, how that, what that meaning of that little phrase is. <laughs>
Hey!